Hello and welcome everyone to the final day of week seven for the LCS Challengers League brought to you by Subway. Shout out to everyone coming in from the LCS raid. Awesome to have you here when we're happy to get going for what is the last chance race for playoffs for a lot of these teams. And I'm joined on the desk by none other than Joshi, who uh, is still in the same state as I am, although the mood lighting would make you think that it's nighttime there. Uh, it is actually like nighttime here. Though, Wherever we have an opportunity to like just be in somewhere else, make sure as we are far as possible away from you, Steve, it always is a good day, you know? <laughs> Wait, what, what, what is this disrespect? I, I got the, the I, natural lighting out. Also, I'm realizing right now I'm using my webcam instead of my actual camera, so that's probably why it's a little different. That does me, make anyway. sense. But it does make what? sense. <laughs> Yeah, we're not here to talk about ourselves. We're here to talk about the players and the teams ahead of us. So let's take a look at what's in front of us today with, uh, first off, a catch up on the standings. I tease that this is the last chance race for playoffs. There are eight out of 10 teams making it there. Two of the teams at the bottom will be going into the relegation promotion tournament. And uh, we already see a couple of favorites up at the top. A lot of teams that have already locked in their spots. But Joshi, we are going to see one particular match today that's very important because towards the bottom, there's still a lot of variance and a lot of movement that can happen. There's a lot of teams that can still end up falling down. We already know that Mirage Alliance has fallen too far behind. It is no longer possible for them yep. to make playoffs anymore. However, the question of who the other team that is going to be making relegation promotion is going to have a big impact. And crucially, Disguise and Lit, two of those teams who are right on the cusp of going to promotion versus going to the uh, playoffs, are going to be playing each other today. And it will have massive impacts for both the futures of these teams. Yeah, I'll take a look at that schedule right now. DSG versus Lit is kicking off the day. These are the two teams currently in that ninth place position, tied in series score and in game score. Whoever can take this series is doing a great job of, you know, separating themselves. And with the way that the tiebreakers work out, it goes by series score, then game score, then head to head. If either one of these teams can 2-0 their opponent today, I've done the cangulations. I've run the numbers. I feel like I'm confident in the math. So I can say that if either of these teams 2 0s their opponent, they will guarantee themselves into playoffs. Uh, that hasn't been checked by anybody on the stats team officially. So if that's wrong, that's on me. Uh, Wildcard versus AOE will close out the day. Also a big one for those two teams for their seeding going into playoffs, who, according to my cangulation, they're both locked as well. But starting off with the first series, let's look at this guy's Josh, the reigning championship team with only one returning that championship run in young yeah and it's an entirely different roster again a huge different look for anybody who is used to seeing these guys from last split however this is a team that has definitely fallen short of a lot of people's expectations you look at this sure. roster there's a lot of people who have played lcs in the past who we have looked at as potentially being on the cusp of making it there and right now we're talking about whether or not they will even make the postseason of the challengers league this is a roster where for whatever reason with all the strong individual pieces have not been able to come together as a group and this is getting very close to their last opportunity to at least prove that they can hang with some of the better teams in the league yeah, it feels like the last chance for them. But I also want to point something out here. Throughout the whole split, we had the disguised hand-drawn images for everybody. And for some reason, Poom's the only one remaining. What's up with that? He, he played LCS. We we <laughs> should have photos of Poom, right? Yeah, I mean, my uh, other you know, favorite part of it is everybody has a different jersey on. <laughs> <you know? laughs> That's a, that's a nice little touch. Uh, you know, that aside, uh, I think this guy's that's a big story. There was high expectations. A lot of people from the community thought that they would be doing much better. They have shown promise, though, especially in their last series. So we're going to be keeping our eyes on them. Let's look at their opponents. Lit Esports on the other side of the Rift. One of the teams that promoted, they were in the last promotion tournament at the end of summer, and they actually made it into the NACL. Uh, and currently, they still have that shot of maintaining their position, but it looks like it could be back-to-back -back promotion tournaments for them. What are your thoughts on Lit, Josh? In general, I think Lit, even in the first place, when they were in the last promotional tournament, were a bit of a surprise at how easily they made, they made their way into the Challengers League this time around. So the fact that they are right on the cusp is not terribly surprising, but this is again one of these teams where we didn't necessarily have the highest expectations based on them individually but i actually feel as though they might have outperformed some of our expectations based on where they've been able to pick up their wins and now with okay. only two teams that we expected to do very well at the beginning of the year as their last remaining opponents they can still showcase an opportunity to continue playing and improving coming into summer 
That's a good point. And I, I want to highlight some of the individual players that have also been turning heads. Dragoon had a couple of really breakout games earlier on in the split, but as the split has gone on, I've actually been still pretty impressed with Rockboom's ability to carry in team fights. Even if the laning phases haven't always been going his way, uh, especially in the recent series, he's been up against some <laughs> you know tough opponents. Uh, but I think that there are individuals on this team to get excited about when we look at the developmental level, because that's what we're in. This is the developmental yeah, sure. league. This is where players are trying to test their metal and improve. Uh, and I definitely I definitely think that there's a lot of players like Dragoon, like Rockman, to get excited about when it comes to that, like looking to the future, looking a couple splits down the road, maybe a year down the road, where could they potentially go? But we're ready for pick a band of game number one. So let's hop into it here, Josh. A reminder for everybody joining us from the LCS raid. This is Fearless Draft, so it's not going to affect game one. But as we go through this best of three series, if a team plays champions, they cannot play those champions again, which oftentimes means a game one has a little more weight to it than traditionally in best of three series. Because if you get like that big power pick, like blue one, Azir, Oriana, or something like that, you're not going to be able to do that again later on in the series. Exactly. However, you can expect that your opponents will get it, so it puts a bit more of an onus on yeah. you to go for the bands. However, looking at this one more time, I do have to acknowledge the last time we saw Lit Esports was last week when they played up against Maryville, and they had about 50 total minutes of game time. It was not a particularly yeah. close series, so this is one of those things where we need to see if Lit can turn this one around, if they can find things, because while we have seen that there has been a bit of a winning streak, I say, as Disguise won their last series. Lit Esports have not won any of their last four series, meaning it's not a lot of momentum going into the last couple of games that they need to play. And going into this one, I'm really looking towards the bottom lane. This is a team where it has been really focused on two players, Dragoon and Rockboom. And Dragoon has a very tough opponent in Tenacity, who in, even in a lot of their losses has uh, made a big impact here for Disguise. The question is, can he build enough of a lead against Dragoon that they're able to actually carry it through? Yeah, our eyes are going to be on a lot of those individual performers. I want to also give some context for the overall, you know, implications of this match. Like I said, a 2-0 gets you into that position where you don't have to worry about that uh, promotion tournament anymore. I am expecting a 2-1, and then we look at the rest of the season to see what's the rest of their strength and schedule look like. Lit has TLC to go up against. Disguise has AoE. So both of those teams that these guys are going to be playing against also kind of within striking distance when we look at the current standings. So it's not doom and gloom for either of them if they do walk away with a loss here but we are at the point where there's only two series left to play and uh, you're really fighting for every single game you can get so catching up on picks and bands a lot of focus on the bot side here alongside Xin Zhao and Kindred pretty classic bands against Kizno so it's Ash blue one priority for DSG fun fact I just told you this earlier today because I was looking at the numbers out of 91 games played there have been 81 Ash bands even though it has like a 40% win rate in the 10 games it has made it through so DSG are prioritizing that. And it's going to be matched by the Volley Bear on the other side for Lit. Now, this is a pretty classic champion that was dominating, I believe it was spring last year when we really saw a lot of the Volley Bear. And this yeah. champion, with the extra movement speed it got on its Q in the most recent patch, actually can keep up to a lot of champions. It's playable in the top lane. It actually looks like something that Dragoon would be very willing to play and is very playable in the jungle as well. However, we do see the Hui coming out for Lit at the same time. And while it has mostly been played in the mid lane, we know that Diamond at least has been very explorative with the uh, support Hui as well. So we'll see yeah. exactly how they can play together. I like the combination of movement speed buffs that they can give to the Volley Bear. I, th I think that we've seen the Hui only with the Senna and I believe maybe a Varus game. So with those off the table, I'm not sure if they'd offer that, but you are right, technically flexible as Ziggs is locked in. Shout out to the last uh, LCS series. APA did not play the Ziggs, but was very close to picking up a, a, a game win there against Cloud9. That was a really fun one to watch at the end. But it will be Young piloting the Ziggs most likely here this time around. Although, are you sure it's Manui? It. it is a Manui <laughs> champ. Yeah, I as soon as I saw the Ziggs, I was pretty confident huh. it was going to be going down towards the bot lane and Ash support would be coming through. And that's actually usually like it's a bit split between where you play in the AD carrier versus in the support, and it creates a lot of pressure on the other side. This combination has a ton of pushing power between the two of them, and the biggest way to shut down this kind of combination in the bottom lane is you gank it a lot, because even though Ash does have the slow, as long as you have a character like the Nautilus, they don't have a ton of mobility. You lock them down once, you get their flash, suddenly you're asked for repeat visits down there. Now, the Aatrox already picked up for Tenacity, there's been a little bit of discussion about what you can actually play into this character. When is it actually good? Can you play Lethality? Do you need to go with the Hydra style builds? And this might be a hot take. I really like seeing the Volley Bear into the Aatrox because you are so 
good at sticking to the Aatrox. If your Q gets interrupted the first time with one of the knockups, you get it right back. You can just continue zooming on top of the Aatrox. I'm actually going to look that up right now because I, I was thinking about that too. Like, what if we do Volley Bear and Aatrox? What does that win rate look like in a high elo? So I'm going to be looking at those numbers, but I also want to highlight that they can ban away other things that Dragoon likes to play. Dragoon's got an interesting champ. If you don't know about this player, Darius is on there, Mordekaiser's on there. I'm expecting both of those as bans. But then things like Jax might make it through as well. I have seen Jax be a champion that a lot of people like to play into that Aatrox as of late. So... It's going to be tough for DSG to take away all the options for Dragoon. Yeah, I definitely like the Volley Barrier going in there, which is why it's a little bit surprising to me that they're double banning the top lane. That kind of forces the Volley Barrier to go top because you're rapidly running out of options. However, we are going to be seeing Lit go to the other side of the map a little bit. They do still need to confirm where the Volley Barrier is going, but they also need to pick up themselves a Marksman. And the Zeri is a little bit of an interesting choice to me. You get pushed back really, really hard in this game, and it takes a long time for Zeri to chew through an Aatrox, and with the Zeri pick coming through, I know Rockling was a player that is really good at finding angles in team fights, but it's usually for more explosive damage than that, and I feel as though DSG have already created a situation where they're going to be putting a lot of pressure onto the backline of Lit, and with the Zazir coming through, you kind of outrange them, and you really yeah. prevent the Volibear and the Nautilus from being as effective as you want them to. That's the big thing I'm looking at is Ash, Ziggs, Azir. It's going to be tough for the Zeri to actually get in range to output all that DPS that she can do in fights. But you got to be close enough to actually do that. All those champions should be outranging. I'm looking at the win rate, though, because I have found it now. Um, the Volleyball only has a 49.67% win rate against Aatrox in Diamond 2+. Plus. So uh, It gets higher in Masters+. Plus. Okay, let's, let's look, look, okay, you know what? I'll give it to you. Uh, we'll look Masters+. <laughs> plus. Though. It's 52.66 in Masters+. Plus. I also have that open. Wait, actually? Yeah. It is a very strong champion, and ooh, the Malphite would be an interesting combination. We're different stats. <laughs> we are. We might have different <laughs> websites open at the moment. Anyway. What site are you on? All right. Yeah, we'll uh, talk about that later, but right I now. I don't think it's going to happen, though. I think it's Volleybear Jones. Uh, gonna go I want to give a quick shout-out. Yeah. I want to give a quick shout-out to someone that probably only I would ever know in the set and the Volleybear. This was a classic that one of the teams in my rec league played like two years ago. They had the set and the Volleybear. You had to ban both of them because they would first pick either of them and they would alternate between which one is playing which position. And so this looks almost exactly like the kind of games I was playing in my flat and under rec leagues like two <laughs> years ago. And the team that Disguise is playing is actually very similar to something we would play. So this is super, super funny to me. The only difference is I would have never played the eight tracks. It's not my kind of champion, but you have sure. a lot of freedom in this top side of the map from DSG. You are creating a lot of pressure, but it entirely depends on how big of meatballs this set and this volley bear are going to be, how much pressure they can put on. And the one thing that they do really thrive in is the fact that the Azir and the Ziggs are both doing magic damage. The Canic Rookern is going to be such a valuable item for both of these characters. And then... Aatrox is going to take forever to get through either of them, so he can't out-sustain them in long term. But it suddenly becomes this really weird question of how big is the ball? How big is the health bar of the tank at the front line? Uh, I will say the Volibear so far, the builds have been pretty standard. I've seen a lot of the same things coming through. Kinnikrick hasn't been picked up yet from what I've noticed in, in the games that I've been casting. So we'll see if they actually opt for that because typically it's things like the Iceburn Gauntlet. Uh, you can go for the Sundered Sky if you want to get that damage early on, then Gauntlet afterwards. But uh, you also, uh, I've seen even things like the uh, Dead Man's Play just to give that additional movement speed. So most of that's got armor on it. We'll see what Kizno decides to go here as it looks like we are hopping into game number one any oh. moment now. I want to give thoughts though, no, on not. the primary win conditions here, Joshi, because we haven't quite talked about that. Oh, here we go. No, nope. nope, it's not. There we go. Steve, there you're clearly not paying attention to production. They had told us that uh, we unfortunately have a bit of a technical issue and will take a little bit of time for us to get back into the game. What was your thought, though? You, you sounded like you had something very intelligent to say. The cancellations are coming through. Well, see, that's the secret. Is, you know, you always got to sound confident, even if what was about to come out was not. But I was going to say, <laughs> let's set up the win conditions for each team. I want to hear, you know, where each uh, composition is going to be stronger and where we need to keep our eyes as the game timer ticks on. So normally, when I look at a Zeri composition, Zeri usually becomes the main character of any team that they're on. But this time, I'm not really convinced that's the player that is going to have the most impact. I actually want to put a 
highlight on messages in this game because as the way he's actually going to have a lot of opportunity to do damage to the backline he can threaten Minui as well as Young on the other side in ways that the Zeri can't really get to because it's too short range at the same time if Tenacity gets a really big lead in this game and can find advantages topside, suddenly, if he's winning the frontline duel like 1v2, if he's able to take down both Dragoon and Kizno at the same time and out sustain them, then it doesn't matter how big the set and the Volley Bear really get because he is just going to put a stop to them almost immediately. And so, these are the two players I'm really going to be paying attention to to see if they can find advantages that they can then push later in teamfights. All right, well, that's our thoughts on the current uh, rosters and matchups, but we are uh, having a slight delay here while we're getting into the game. So with that said, we're going to send it to a short break and actually hear from some of our players on their thoughts going into this one. So we'll be right back after this. I think there'll be more champions. The meta is switching a little bit now with a lot of buffs and nerfs. So we'll definitely we'll definitely get up to 130 past that for sure. For sure there'll be more, especially since Kilti's in the league. So yeah. There'll definitely be more than 99, just because fearless draft you know, and especially once we get to best of five series, I think things will get even crazier. I think there'll probably be more, just because in game threes you're not allowed to like go back to traditional comfort, and in high pressure moments that's what most people will default to. I feel like more just because it's fearless, but I mean I don't even know that. You know, but all I know is all I know is I'm big. That's all I know. Like I can definitely say there's picks I don't want to see. Like Shaco, Rengar, Zach, Six, Nunu. I don't care about any other unique picks like laning, but like if anybody picks those. Nah, I can't do it. I actually can't do it. I know it might sound crazy, but I can't do that. Maybe if like Yumi was an anime character with like two swords. Nah, not, not with how Yumi is right now, I can't do that. Can't take the deal. I'm 100% taking that. Three million dollars to just be the best Yumi ADC on the server? 100%. That's a lot of money. I'm down. Yeah, I'll take it. Money is money, you know? Doing it. Easy. Doing it. It's all good. Million, it's a million dollars. You know? No matter who it is, you know? Million dollars. Any champ's ability... There's a lot of different abilities. Maybe like Twitch Q. I've always wanted to go invisible. I don't even know. I don't even know. I, I'd have to think about that for a minute, but like off the rip, I could do like Twitch Q. That would probably be, that would probably be clean. Just invis. Yeah, no, I'd take Twitch Q, 100%. I could be like TFE and print money. Hands down, best solution here is TFO. Just so you can teleport like anywhere on the globe, pretty much. And you can reveal your enemies. If you have an off lurking nearby, you pop the ulti and they get lit up. It's like safety plus teleportation, now that I think about it. Twisted Fate Ultimate, if the ultimate worked semi-global, 500 miles. Anything lower than that, I'd choose something else. I mean, Zillion ulti, probably, just for vibe people. The fun answer is like, Zigzar, you know, cause then I'm just like, really powerful and like, I have a nuke I can drop whenever. Not that I would like, do anything with it, but like, yeah, maybe Zigzar or uh, Zillion R. The question, maybe Gragas W so I can drink? Gragas is like an infinite amount, you know? You just press W. Probably Smolder R. It's because it's really fun to use and honestly, like, having a big dragon swoop down on me when I need help would be really cool and I've also been playing the champ a lot, so, yeah. Hello and welcome back, everybody. We're getting ready for game number one of our Sunday broadcast between Lit and DSG. Both these teams with their backs against the wall. A 2-0 here gets them out of that playoff, or rather, out of the promotion tournament and into playoffs, which is something that both of them are really going to be looking for. And while we're waiting to get into the game, Josh, I want to talk about DSG because they are the defending champs and they've had a rough split so far. But when we look at the performers on the team, let's take some time to set them up here as we're getting into a do or die match for them. Who are you keeping your eyes on going into this series as somebody that needs to step up and carry? Like I already talked about before, Tenacity is one of the big win conditions for this team going into this game. And not just that, he's also been one of the players that we've been looking at as potentially being the guy in top lane that we've had almost every single split. Tenacity has had a lot of opportunities to kind of strut his stuff up in the top lane, but it's always been a question of how 
how well can he sync up with the rest of his team? When he was playing on 100 Thieves Academy back in the day, he didn't really need to because he was filling leads that were so large all on his own that he didn't need the rest of his team to help him out. This time around, doesn't seem as though they're necessarily syncing up with Perry quite as well as what we've seen from them in the past. And they're also not necessarily able to build up enough of a lead throughout all of their individual games. And so this is, again, one of Tenacity's last opportunities to showcase that he is worth looking at potentially going into the next LCS season. It's a lot of pressure to put on a player, but I think it's pretty apt to do so, considering Tenacity's story so far, making it to LCS, taking some time off as a content creator before Whoa. coming back and competing here yet again. So now as the Aatrox into set, also against Dragoon, one of the up-and-coming top laners who's turning a lot of heads is like, this is also the guy who's trying to make that argument of he is the guy yeah. uh, in the top lane. I mean, there's a lot of big names in this league, but Dragoon so far has been, you know, stepping up to the challenge more often than not. Yeah, I also want to say this is probably, oh, good dodge. This is probably the closest we've ever seen. Oh. Really? Wow. Interesting. Right there. Throwing okay. out the summoner spell heal to get one extra auto attack and a messages. Now, that to me says that, yeah, if you have Ziggs lane, you're not going to try and fight that much against the Zeri Nautilus anyway. So you're just yeah. really prioritizing giving Young a better matchup in mid. Yeah, I honestly really like that. It's really bold, and especially knowing that Plux does not have the hook available means you're relatively safe. Just go for these extra auto attacks, and that will already burn one of Message's potions in the mid lane. And that does mean that Young, look at how much pressure he's already putting on this mid lane. This is yep. one way to upset the balance of power because we were already saying if messages can build a lead it's very tough for DSG. Yeah, but then if you walk up like this and get dredge lined, it's okay. a little scarier. I think that Boom does need to respect it. But, you know, as I say that, it's only one Q ability for Plux, and it is a longer cooldown early on. So, Boom so far playing very aggressive and getting rewarded for it down the summoner spell, but winning these trades, the top laners are also duking it out. So far, it's been all about the laners going for these trades against each other for the health bars. It's priority bot side for DSG, but priority top side for Lit. Lux is taking a lot of damage right here. Ooh, yeah, I mean, we're, we're seeing exactly close. why, Steve. You were talking about how high of a ban rate this champion has had as Perry is spotted out by Kizno. This is why Ash is so banned so much, is because it is so oppressive in the bottom lane. You get so many attacks. The Hail of Blades is basically unparalleled. And, you know, your roommate, Mazel, loves talking about the combination of uh, getting the slows and approach velocity to run down people as they are yeah. already slowed. It is very difficult for Flux, and he's still only level 1. Rock Boom is only at 7 CS, and they're taking so much of the jungle away from Kizna at the same time. Kizno had to just kind of watch as those camps got taken away. He was looking for a potential smite steal, but doesn't get it. So Perry actually takes away two camps from his jungle opponent. A lot of that off of the back of Poom's aggression in the bot lane using this Ash pick. I was surprised to see how many more bans it had over anybody else in the league. It was 81 bans for Ash, and it was like 44 for Karma as the second most banned champion. But, you know, maybe Poon's uh, making it make a little more sense now <laughs> yeah. without this early game's gun. I also want to point out that the play we just saw on Takizno is how Maryville slaughtered this team, right? It was not mm. close whatsoever, and I love the fact that Young coming over sees Kizno moving towards the top half of the map, which will allow DSG to react. You already see Poom on his way up. Perry is also coming over this way as well. Kizno will at least get the scuttle crowd, but it guarantees that Perry is not going to be losing any of his jungle. He even goes to check some of the bushes to make sure Kizno is I not mean, coming in. Are we going to gank topside? Wow. Perry and Poom are here. Perry's going to be spotted. That's enough for Dragoon to back up. They won't see Poom yet. Poom actually... Okay, it does continue to walk up. So Dragoon knows this wave's going to crash. There's going to be three people there, but DSG pull it off, pull it back. It's kind of scary to oh. go for the big dive under the set, but now Plux sees a window. Because Boom was topside to go Ooh. in aggressive onto Manui. A lot of interesting map play happening here around the support in particular. But honestly, Kizno's kind of fine for this. He's even going to look for a gank mid or even catch Boom on the rotation back. This would be big. Yeah. Still no heal. So, he doesn't see him. Oh, there he Flux. Flux is there. Flash nice. forward and Boom just flashes away. All right. Aggression from lit support. Not going to get on top of Boom. So. 
At least a trade of summoner spells. Yeah, I really like the trigger finger there from Poom, knowing he needs to flash almost immediately. And I love the play and counter play we're seeing coming through. Last time we saw Lit get invaded like we were talking about with Maryville, they got blown apart. They lost multiple members, they lost a ton of camps, and here, we're not necessarily seeing that same kind of collapse from the Lit side of the map as we have in yeah. the past. And at the same time, Minui still pretty much okay. He just hangs out down in the bottom lane. He gets most of the farm. But uh-oh, level six. Yeah, hits first for Dragoon. Tenacity's in a lot of trouble, has to flash away. Dragoon oh, flashes no. forward, taking a lot of turret shots. Oh, no. Dragoon's gonna go down. <laughs> oh, first blood to Tenacity. How did that happen? Okay, it's answered mid lane. Disguise do make a plan of messages and grab that. I thought that Dragoon would have the, the shield, but it never came out. I, I don't no. know if it was on cooldown. I missed it from earlier. He used it to basically start the trade, and by the time he goes oh. underneath the turret, it's not available. No shield coming through. He thought he could finish it off with auto attacks, but it looked like he basically flashed and plays, and now Manui's in trouble. Has flash though. He should be fine. Oh. Ooh, sidesteps the lollipop. That looked like it was going to land, actually. Well done for Manui to stay alive there. Poom's now walking around. Kizno sees him. Not level 6 on Volibear, though. Only level 4. Not a huge wave to crash with, so instead just going to go for the Krugs. Yeah. And Perry's uh, being very efficient on the opposite side of the map, going for the grubs instead. It already looks like it might be a bit of a collapse from Lit. We said that they needed to have an opportunity for messages on way to be strong, but oh, this could be the bottom lane. Yeah, we're uh, collapsing onto Poom. No flash on the Ash. They do flash from Ziggs, but it's not going to be enough. Ooh, Satchel Charge gets him out of there. Had oh. to cool down to get away right there. It does survive. Lit get a kill bot side. They will lose the grubs, but while all the dives were happening, or the fight happening topside, rather, we did see Dragon started up by Lit. So they got yeah, that there one it off is. camera. Yeah, there is the punch. Okay. Yeah. I mean, he gets level 6 off of it, thinks he can go aggressive, but I think he just shorts his flash. Yeah, he doesn't yeah. flash as far as he could, and missing out on the extra auto attack that could have given does mean that Dragoon will die to the turret, and we'll get to see the mid lane gank at the same time. I mean, Young is level 6, Messages does get it, but it doesn't really matter. It is way more important for Young to be level 6, and even though he misses out on the ultimate, that's a lot of buttons already used for Messages, now with no flash, a very easy kill coming through from Perry. One of those instances where I think Messages needed to read that, hey, they were going to gank. That's why Young was going for the aggressive ult. You flash away, then walk back forward to get the damage, get punished for it. While that's happening, though, Kizno did get that dragon, so I think that's important to note that they have a slight dragon stack. And Kizno's going to take the second Raptors in a row away from Parry. I mean, it's nice. And Perry was just counter jungling topside, though, so it's a, basically a trade. Yeah, and Young will spot it out, so it is a known quantity. However, this play around the red buff, you already saw a rock boom moving towards that towards that buff. Perry is on his way. Kizno, they both have their smites available, and now Poom comes over. It will be a smite fight for this. Yeah, it would have been nice for Plux to stick around, especially once they spotted that control ward. Plux didn't walk in to check the brush. So Perry sees it happening and actually just pushes Kizno away, who does not feel like he's got the backup he would need to contest that. Level 6 hit for Perry earlier, about two and a half camps ahead of Kizno right now. He'll run back over to his buff and spot it out by the Ash. You were talking about the uh, difficulty for Ash and Ziggs to prevent the dives. Oh, let's get back to that as Perry's just going to take a 1v1 against Kizno. Has the Bomby Cinder, which does a decent amount of damage in these early skirmishes. Still... Old to go up against the press of the attack Kizno on Volibear. Somehow winning out on that regardless. And yeah. even looking for more. Kizno could be in trouble. Has to walk away. Bot wave is completely shoved in. And Young is walking to back up his jungler. The bot lane with that shove can walk oh. up too. Lux is still going to walk forward with the dredge line. But Rock Boom's just not going to do a lot of damage here. Pops the ultimate. Parry throws out. Glacial Prison. No backup from Young. He would have needed a Zir to go in there as well, but DSG, they're not fully committing to the play. Yeah, this is really interesting to watch as we, we are non-stop action as Dragoon goes in again. Yeah, does he get under the turret this time around? Tenacity has level 6, rather level 8, so his ultimate's available. Harder for Dragoon to actually take that 1v1, so just an ult for an ult trade. I like the idea overall, right? Fighting to make sure we see the freeze maintained, but Tenacity is able to go get these honey fruit, and he's going to have way more sustain in his lane than Dragoon will. So overall, I do want to give credit where it's due. This is some of the most control you've seen from either of these teams. True. Mm, good combo from Tenacity. Dodges out on the face breaker. Yeah. It is more controlled than what we've been seeing, but we are still seeing some of that hesitancy, right? I feel like a stronger team, Maryville perhaps, would have had more members. They would have committed Manui's ultimate for that potential dive on the bottom side. I think that's been one of the Ooh. big differences. Speaking of dives, okay, Tenacity's able to get away. 
They have the Volley Bear ultimate now. Kizno just hit level six from the earlier camp spot side and was considering going for a dive if they got to Tenacity faster. But Puma's up topside yet again. Yeah. Puma's been kind of all over the map this game. The one thing I really want to see from Poom is relatively soon hitting that level six, getting access to the ultimate because he does, you know, a lot of harass. He can slow people down. But here's the all in. Oh, Rockboom goes for the all in. The satchel did not do too much, but Minui still just has a lot of damage on Rockboom. How is the zigs out oh. DPSing Azari? Not long. That's how the uh, answer goes. Rockboom will actually get it. Looks for a moment that Minui had that, but. Well done from Rockboom. Does have to burn Flash for that. Yeah, as soon as Manui doesn't hit the W, the big question is Rockboom only needs to dodge out on one bouncing bomb and has the Flash to do it. As soon as Manui roots himself in place to go for the Q, it means that Rockboom knows that he can Flash away from it. Good job there. Manui with no Flash does just go down. I do want to pride Rockboom on his ability to find a lot of these angles. He and Sajed have been two of the big players that are always looking for some of these 1v1s. And now we're getting a fight around the next dragon. But look at Poom, level 4. Look at Plux, level 6. The Nautilus is going to be so much more valuable. I, I got to echo your sentiment right there. Poom, he's been making a lot happen on the map, but he actually hasn't, you know, it, it, I think he's put himself a little behind because of that. He's been hovering where it feels good to hover, but he hasn't been, like, getting his team too far ahead for his roams. And now the teleport coming in from young mid lane. We don't see a huge contest from Lit at the Dragon yet. But it looks like DSG might not even commit to it either. Parry's there, but I still favor Lit if the fight does break out. Yeah, the big thing will be how much damage can Minui actually do. He does have access to the ultimate as we're seeing another duel going in top lane. That's a lot of damage. That was a lot of true damage from the face breaker that time around. I think Dragoon has it. Tenacity's got the shield from the Eclipse that was completed. Ooh. Flash forward. Tenacity turns it and wins the 1v1. But the other Meanwhile, five. The dragon Plux does roam around. Flanks Perry. The Sejuani's oh. in a lot of trouble. Flashes doesn't get over the wall. Will fall oh, no. to Kizno. And the dredge line lands onto the carry. Minui has to flash the wall. DSG falling apart at the Dragon, despite Tenacity getting the solo kill top lane. Yeah, Young not able to get a good Empress to 5, potentially gets trapped by the wall. Nabal not able to find anything there. Minui. Yeah, oh, Flux dear. from Flox, he still had it earlier. Heal used by Poom, and now oh. Teleport coming in. Poom might turn this. One more auto shoot enough auto. for Rock Boom, but the bomb from Minui will actually claim it, and oh. Flox no longer has a Flash available. The slows come out from the Ash, and Tenacity can kick it. Actually, it's Young. Why it's not young. give it to the Azir instead? Either way, you're happy with the gold going on to the carries. DSG, nice catch. I gotta say, I think one of the things that we're looking at right now from the side of Lit is a shaking in their confidence, right? One of the things we've looked at with players like Scary Jerry is he has looked so confident this year, but that was a perfect example of watching Rock Boom and Plus not sure where they need to go. Okay, Perry spots away one of these grubs. He only needs one more in order to get the little Twitch Chatters to come help him out with the turrets. And Dragoon wanted to get the wave under before helping out Kizno. I think Perry will only get that one. Now more members of Lit are hanging out in the area. I believe... Actually, now I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting who got the grubs the first time around. I Perry think it was did. Perry that got yeah, all, he got three all three of them. So that should be four to two pickup, right? Yeah, that means no, you know, little mites coming through for either side, but yeah. I still want to go back to that fight we saw around the Tribrush, because we saw, it looked like everybody there was a little bit unsure of exactly what they wanted to do. Boom, just needed one more auto attack to go into Rock Boom in order to finish him off. Ends up being a bomb coming out from Minui to lock that one down, whereas Rock Boom and Plus still unsure what direction they needed to go, and this has been a problem that has plagued both of these rosters, and now, this guy's looking to be a bit more decisive. Oh, big play from Young. Shuffles only on the plucks. Now he's kind of in a rough spot. Zigbomb will come in to help him out, but Kizno will jump on. Rockboom picks up the shutdown. Young was looking for a little bit more there, but with Tenacity joining in, I think they will be slows. doing just fine. Boom with the slows on to Rockboom. Tenacity continuing to chase him down. There's no pick to be had. Rockboom does make it back to safety. Harry and Poom are on to the dragon, and I think that they should be able to pick this one up. It will be traded for the top lane turret. It will be the first turret of the game, so that's a fair amount of money going over to Dragoon. And it, again, it does look a little bit confused. We did see Young trying to go in for that fly, trying to get things started with the Azir. He can shuffle a lot of people, but he only is able to catch one. That's part of the way I have to flash almost immediately because he does not push people into somewhere new where they have to readjust to the rest of the play. At the same time, we still see Disguise. They're now tied in Dragons. They're up a thousand gold, but as we look at this play again, 
Watch how long it actually takes Young to throw out this ultimate, right? He goes in, but because he gets knocked up, he gets knocked airborne, he's not able to throw out the ultimate, has to flash immediately and puts him in a perfect spot for Rogan to pick him up. Yeah, Tenacity roaming down does save the play in the long run, but you're right, it does trade for the top turret. Tenacity is winning the 1v1 versus Dragoon, but instead of using that to just keep sh uh, smashing up there, he's utilizing his strength for the team, going for the objectives. You like to see it, but it means that Dragoon is getting back into the game. Has the Stride Breaker completed now as DSG are on to the Herald. Again, Tenacity kind of hovering mid lane rather than catching the wave bot side. So DSG are heavily uh, prioritizing grouping as a team and trying to make sure that the objectives they're going for are secured. I'm wondering how uh, much room they're giving Lit, though, to get gold onto some of the members that theoretically could be a little further behind. Yeah. It also is going to depend quite a bit on how Dragoon and Kizno do decide to itemize, right? We already see the Sundered Sky come through and the Stride Breaker, so they have a little bit of damage already. Now comes the question of how much do they itemize offense versus defense. As we talked about, these are some spicy meatballs. They are some big meatballs. They're the perfect <laughs> kind to put in your spaghetti, and you need to make sure that they are strong enough to withstand the damage coming in from Young. This is a perfect example of you know games where you cannot afford to go to the tank build on Young, because then you would never kill these two characters. Characters. However, this is now a position where if they start itemizing a little bit more magic resist, Young and Manui will really struggle with them, and it'll be really focused on Tenacity, who luckily already has the Eclipse build, so he does some damage, but it's still going to take him a long time to chew through some of these big, beady boys. I, I don't, you know, I don't know if I'm going to call Volibear with Sundered Sky a meatball. I feel like that's not yet. Alfredo at best. But you know what? <laughs> we'll see if it's able to survive long enough here as we are setting up for a potential dive bot. No, never mind. I thought we were going to have a play. No play. No play. Oh, play Plux? No, no play. Ooh, I can play Plux. Arrow does land. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 That's a very funny hitbox right there. Uh, it doesn't actually move, but it's fine. He's good. He's good. You know, in this guy's defense, I also would have assumed that he would have gotten out of that, so I would not have gone for the play anyway, but because he hit the wall, suddenly becomes, hmm. And you still have plenty of tools to get things started. As Perry jumps in 3v4. Yeah, I mean, this is a bold engage, but he does have Tenacity as backup. Not enough damage to kill Perry. He's too tanky. He is the true meatball, as one will already fall. Kizno's out of the fight. Tenacity's trying to drain tank through it, but Dragoon walks up in the bot lane. They get a big shutdown onto Tenacity. Ooh. DSG's damage dealers were not ready for that play. Young's topside, Manui was still mid. So even though they got the initial pick on a Kizno, they just didn't have enough damage to take the fight afterwards. And you're right, the Chicken Alfredo, it's not a meatball yet. We'll see what they go next, but it does mean that it Kizno goes down relatively quick on the other side of the map, though. Like you said, because the damage dealers weren't ready for the fight, it's because they were doing other things. They get the top lane turret. Young also pushes it into the next structure as well. And it creates a situation where you will be able to go for this upcoming dragon because your top wave will be pushing forward unless Messenger is able to clear that out. Perry. Okay, this actually is pretty rough. Has flash, has no ult. But Kizno and Rockboom don't want to full commit to it. They didn't have a lot of forward vision see if anybody else was coming up. Or actually, they did see Poon coming up from that ward that was over in the Raptors pit, I believe. But either way, they don't want to full commit onto Parry there. I see. I feel like every time Parry sees somebody on his screen, he just presses Q immediately. Yeah. I feel like we, we should have a counter for that of like, how often does he actually hold that ability? As Harold yeah. dropped mid, we're going to throw it at the turret. AB gets us another one here. No, shouldn't. Oh, wait, no, oh, it's Ziggs. They, the they have Ziggs. Ziggs. I forgot the Ziggs. That'll do it. Yeah, Mom said it's my turn to go take the mid lane turn. Of course, Manui is able to pick that one up relatively cleanly. This creates a lot more pressure here in the mid lane, and now we'll see how well Lit is able to respond to this. One of the things they have not been particularly good at doing is coming up with inventive angles for a lot of their fights, and it's not obvious to me that they would win a front to back just because of how quickly Young will be able to do the damage to these structures. They get the bottom lane turret as well. We are seeing at least a little bit more familiarity with the high level macro that we we need to see it coming out from teams like the Skies, but they will be losing out on the opportunity to take position around this dragon first. This is why you watch uh, NACL, everybody. This is the league where Azir takes more top. turrets than Ziggs. Teleport coming in here. Young's really looking to push these waves. Dragon's on the table here in five seconds, but DSG are playing to the complete opposite side of the map. They say, okay, take the dragon. We're going to get more gold in our pockets. I don't 
love this because one of the problems that DSG is always going to have is the amount of damage that they are able to do to the front line, right? And these mountain dragons, that are by far the most valuable dragons in the game off of just the base stats that they give you alone. The amount of extra tankiness they give you is massive and it helps out Dragoon and Kizno quite a bit in these upcoming fights. At the same time, it's not like they're just trading the turret for the dragon. Look at the bottom lane where Dragoon has been hitting the bottom lane turret this entire time. Done land, Snassy over the wall, big combo in onto Dragoon, he's still under the turret. Will show Stopper away oh. from that turret, but the Facebreaker does not hit all the true damage onto the Nasty. Can he actually fight through this? Has to flash away. Nasty might look for a chase. Zig's bomb would do a lot of damage, but Manui is currently not rotating down here, so I think Dragoon should be out. Oh, actually, Tenacity, he lands a W. <gasps> big second Q, big third Q, Tenacity with another solo kill, but Dragoon has the movement speed. He's just running around. Oh no, Tenacity hits another one. There it is with the solo kill for the third time, Andre Dragoon. That's crazy. Set's Q does not give you movement speed running away from people. It only gives you movement speed running towards people. And that's the big difference maker here is Tenacity with the extra little mobility able to run him down. Great play coming through from Disguise to use the long distance Ash Arrow. No Dragoon wouldn't be able to dodge it if it actually starts going through. So that gets a lot of gold going over to DSG. They are now up to 3,000 gold in advantage with at least 8 minutes left before Lit are able to pick up the Mountain Soul. This game still a little bit in the balance, but the fact that Disguise are putting more and more money onto Zig and Azir does suddenly mean that you have a lot of pressure in these upcoming fights because Kisna and Dragoon are falling behind in gold. We see that the Baron is now on the table, so we could start fighting over the bigger objectives. Boom actually was a little out of position there, but Kiznos is not willing to fully pull the trigger. And that's kind of the story of the game for Lit, I feel. Not willing to fully commit to the plays, especially Kizno. I When I see Volibear as a jungler, I see aggression, I see early ganks, I see dives happening. And we just there we go. Really gotten that from the volley bear. Yeah, thanks to the observers for throwing this out, right? We are still seeing that Kizno, his gold is doing okay, but the biggest place we're seeing the gold discrepancy come through is in the mid lane. Young, mm. because he's been hitting so many of these sideline structures, has been getting a lot more gold that way, has a decent amount of CS, and also the top lane where Tenacity, with his three kills now on Dragoon, is pulling ahead. These are two of the places where we were talking about. Tenacity needs a lead against Dragoon, and then Messages needs to build a lead against Young. That hasn't happened for Lit. Their major win condition is starting to fall behind, and they don't really have the tools necessary from Rock Boom to do the damage to the targets that they want to be hitting. It is going to take them a while to get through all this, and going into and take them yeah, very tanky Sejuani champion right there, so they don't fully commit to that one either. Arrow lands on the Plux. They can turn a bomb over the top, but Plux does hit the dredge line onto the wall that time around and gets out of there. So a couple ultimates used. Ooh. And now we're onto the Baron. Okay, no vision yet for Lit. They know that people were around here though, so okay, they now spot Poom there. Mm. Kizno's gonna have to look for it, but Kizno's already taken a lot of damage. Plux has already taken a lot of damage. Oh, Tenacity. And Tenacity's roaming in. Dragoon will need to look for a teleport flank. Big damage out of Manui to start things off, but Rockoon will have a little bit of it answered back. Yeshi gets teleport out of Lit's top laner and just decide to back off the Baron. I think that's fine. You don't need to fully commit to it. You can now just pull away them from the bot wave. They're gonna lose a, a full wave down there, and Yeshi are just fine. Yeah, as long as you're creating pressure, as long as you're forcing opportunities to come out from your opponents, with Lit committing that teleport, they're no longer pushing down in the bottom lane. Messages would have to go down there, and he is going to get clappered by Tenacity and Young whenever they find themselves in a side lane because he has no control over when the fights actually start. At the same time, we have about a minute left until the next dragon here, Kangas, and that's going to be really big for Lit. If they're able to find another one there, we now have Messages starting to come online with his damage. We also are starting Starting to look at Rockboom, able to start doing enough damage if he finds a good angle to start hitting Young and Manui. It's not just about the front line that Dragoon and Kizno have been playing. We are now looking at the rest of the members to see if they can actually get the damage on the targets that they need to. And Disguise don't want to give them the time to get there. Yeah, they want to start up this Baron yet again. It's spotted from the far side alteration of a lit. So they know what's happening. Can they make it there in time? They don't have teleport on Dragoon anymore, so he's got to walk all the way over. The arrow goes wide from Poom. Dragoon and Tenacity will spot each other on the approach. Down to okay. 6k health, but Perry's the only one on it. It's a turn for DSG. They want to take the fight here. Big damage on a Plux. He's got to flash away. Now Dragoon's all alone. 
split just had a kind of awkward oh. close to that Baron. Big engage from Dragoon with Kizno over the top, but they just can't get onto the damage. Dealers, Young with the shuffle away. Rockboom goes over the wall, parries very low, but now Young can pump out a lot of damage here. Not too many threats left around. Everyone's health bars are just falling into nothing, but nobody is going down. Wow, I know what play Dragoon was trying to go for there. He just didn't have the speed to do it, but the fact that every single person on this map is blinking red is crazy. Plux almost gets caught here, but the big thing is Dragoon, you watch him, he's trying to get the other angle on Perry. He's trying to get in a position where he can take Perry and yeet it back towards his own team. The fact that this is the play they go for is a huge difference to what they're trying to do, and you're seeing how far everybody has to commit to do this. Rockum has to come over the wall, Kizno has to come over the wall, and the split, the concave that Disguise makes uh, is so difficult for Lit to do anything about. They get the dragon, but Lit are now in position to try and hit the Baron should they choose to. Two dragons to two dragons of the stacks. I'm looking at what was expended there. Flash from Perry, Young, Minui, and Poom. Tenacity, the only one from DSU that still has available. Lit have more, but Dragoon, Kizno, and Message is all up. And now they're actually the ones that are on the Baron to start things off. But a teleport from DSG into the mid lane will push them off. Big arrow lands oh. on the Messages. Tenacity over the top. This could be huge. The pullback. Messages goes down. Can't flash away from the Atrox W, and that is rough for Lit. 4v5, they're gonna have to go for a fight here, but DSG don't really have the engage tools to keep it going. Chase will end, they'll just take the one pick, and now they are the ones back on Baron. This Baron has been aggroed and de-aggroed like five different times already this game. And this time it should and, be going uh, over to like DSG. This might be the time that DSG finally get it. DSG should be able to get it right. The fact that they get the long range arrow onto messages and then he gets pulled back by Aatrox is crazy. And now they kill him over the wall. Blocks. He's gonna go down, Tenacity with a big dunk down. Kizno getting chased away from the Baron. Tenacity can 1v1 the Baron any day of the week. So there is no steal, no contest from Lit. They might get Tenacity, but they might all just get wiped. Tenacity Woo! picks up another kill, flashes away from Rock Boom. He uh, just can't do any damage. We talked about the Zarian pick and ban just doesn't have the DPS right now. Doesn't have the range and a double kill to Tenacity. That's a delayed ace and the Baron. Yeah, I'm just saying if Zeri had like an entire other item, then uh, they would be able to do that damage, but it's just not there yet. This is why I don't really like the Zeri pick in this matchup when they picked it. It doesn't do the damage to the target that they need to be doing damage to. And of course, to be false, yeah, I guess it is just an Alfredo. Not the kind that you really want to be seeing coming through at this point. You need a bit more substance to all of your tanks. And here, Tenacity is just playing around with Rock Boom, knows he can do whatever he wants. The Eclipse with the shield makes sure he's never going to go down in disguise. Now firmly in control of the game because of that pick into messages. The Baron forcing a terrible response from Lit, and Lit trying to do the one thing they could, not able to find any opportunities there. This is looking very rapidly like a disguise win, and every win they can find here is so big. Like we said, if they go 2-0 today, they're virtually guaranteed. I believe they are guaranteed an opportunity to actually make it to playoffs. So this puts them in a dominant position in this series. According to my calculation, the reason a 2-0 guarantees it in is because it goes series score, game score, head-to-head. -head. If they 2-0, and then imagine Lit 2 0s their next series and DSG go 0-2, they're tied in series score, tied in game score, but they would own the head-to-head. -head. That is why, according to my calculations, they are guaranteed that spot if they can 2-0 this. Same for Lit. The narrative goes both ways because they are exact tied right now. This head-to-head -head will actually matter. We'll, you know, get confirmation on that later. That's just the cangulations that I was running before going live today, so... <laughs> don't uh, don't put anything uh, big on that one, but put something big on that arrow on the messages yet Woo! again. Plus, we'll try and buy some space for the team, but the rest of DSG are already in, but maybe too far. Perry goes down. Whoa! Rockboom has the space to make action happen. Young will get a kill out of Kizno, who goes a little over aggressive right there. Dragoon is back. He you teleport. has the teleport. There is a teleport flank. Watch for Dragoon. If he can get behind members of DSG, that could be huge, but he's actually not going to look for it. Instead, he's just going to catch the wave after the inhibitor goes down. Yeah, I mean, we saw Lux and Kizno try and do some cool things, right? Plux bought a lot of time, and Kizno, using the ultimate at the right time to get through the Emperor's Divide, helped out. But unfortunately, they end up losing two inhibitors. They're now down 10,000 gold, and Lit's hopes of making the postseason are starting to crumble away. This is a spot where, with less than a minute left on the Mountain Dragon coming through, it will pull Lit a little bit out of their base because they have to come fight it. They don't get stronger as a roster. Dragoon and Kizno have now fallen too far behind their opposition. 
and Azir Ziggs will do way more damage onto the targets that they want to than Huey and the Zeri later on. This is a perfect position from DSG. They can move anywhere they want, and it looks as though they're going to try and find a fight, find a pick before you actually have to fight for the dragon. Yeah, DSG had a couple members up in the top jungle, but they're banking off here, and they also have vision priority first for mid, as well as that dragon. The Super Minions definitely helping out with that, especially Super Minions bot side. So this bottom half of the map kind of belongs to DSG. You're saying that Lit kind of have to approach and contest this. They might also have the complete opposite read of, we can't. <laughs> yeah. It is too hard to actually walk into this fog of war, walk into this jungle. So it's not worth it. It's not the soul. It's not the end of the game if we give that over, but you're right that it doesn't get easier for them as the game goes on. Maybe just the setup for the play can get a little easier if they have a little more priority in their mid and bot waves. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, at this point, they, they can't do it whatsoever. Even if they're trying to get here, the dragon will be gone from this position, and we see because another dragon goes over towards DSG, the problems that we were looking at are going to start compounding because Rockboom already couldn't deal with Tenacity and Parry. He's really not going to be able to now, even with the last Whisper coming through. He's going to, you know, he's going to start doing some damage. We've also seen how much healing Tenacity does whenever he pops that World Ender, and he has so many perfect targets to heal up on over the course of these fights. So lit. They're kind of waiting for this game to end at this point. They're looking for something and waiting for some kind of major mistake, you know? DSG could just hang their queen. Sometimes it just happens. So if, like, Manui and Yang <laughs> both just run towards the enemy Nexus without the rest of their team, maybe there's a way that Lick can come through, but they are waiting to get major fun. And so far, it's been a clean game from DSG. It looks like they will continue it and end it that way. Nice pick on the Flux to start things off. Now a 4v5 defense from Lit. DSG only had to use three, four ultimates, but some of those are going to be back off cooldown relatively quickly. The Ziggs and the Ash ults are very short cooldown at this point into the game. They're already about halfway there, so... Big defense from Lit. Can they make it happen? A lot of damage onto Tenacity, but not enough to get the kill, and Young still just untouched right there. Yep. He's going to output a lot of damage on this Azir. Plux will come back, though, so it's not the game end. DSG are just using that to create prio for themselves. They get the push from the wave top side. They're going to look for this top turret, but Zig -Zig. will now have a 5v5 fight. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're trying to zigs this turret. It's getting really close, and they're also setting up for the Baron as well. This is one of the criticisms I think a lot of people have had towards DSG, and that they are a little bit slower to end than what they yeah. probably could be doing. And now DSG, they're trying to set up a bait. They're trying to force Lit to come to them. Is and it uh -oh. just again? Okay, you know what? The first time was just a trial run. This time we get blocked. <laughs> And it should be over, right? They don't get Kizno. He is able to run away. All right, DSG, how do we want to approach this one? Baron's coming up, but again, you have supers mid and bot. You have a Ziggs to play with. Last time, Manui teleported topside to try and take that turret. Back-to-back -back picks out of blocks, and we're just going to use it for the Baron instead. I think that it's valid to say that it feels like often DSG have more that they can go for. They're going for a very safe play, though, and when... Essentially, their playoff lives kind of hinge on this series. It does make sense. Pressure is high. You know, you really want to close this one out cleanly, so might as well just go for the 100% play. Yeah, everything here kind of feels like that game five, right? The longer the games go, the longer the series go, the more uh, cautious people tend to be because you do not want to be the one to make the mistake to lose, right? We yeah. we can see they're in a dominant position, but the players do not get to see the eval bar. They do not get to see what the gold lead actually is. And even though they should feel very, very strong, they can also rinse and repeat. Are we going to see Plux get caught a third time? No, Manui's too far to continue with the bomb damage. I mean, it's the life of a Nautilus, you <laughs> You know, you just go out, you go That's just your job forward. at this point, yeah. Yeah, you gotta use your body as a ward. And so, Lip, they will try and find one more scan. Look to Rock Boom to be the big decider, the big player who can try and make something happen, but there are so many crowd control tools available to DSG, it's gonna be difficult for him to make anything happen. Yeah, somebody call it Mike, bro. We got another dirty job for him. Play a Nautilus that's behind. There's now another engage from DSG. Lands onto Kizno this time around. Plux goes in. DC onto Perry, but he's just so tanky. Even Kizno over the top's not going to be enough, but Dragoon will be. Big shuffle from Young as he's in a 1v3 situation. Dragoon went all the way back into the back line, and Young will live. Double kill for the Azir. Tenacity picks up the ace, and all members of Lit are down. That 
should signal the end of the game. They have the Baron, they have the waves, and they have enough of health bars to close this one out. One Nexus turret remaining should not be enough for Lit. Yet, yeah, Young, the only HP that matters is the last one. He's able to stand tall in that last fight in disguise. Will, it took them a little bit longer than it probably needed to, but Disguise, they find the win in this game nonetheless. They just need to find one more in this series to virtually lock themselves an opportunity in playoffs. And not too bad from DSG. It was a slow end to that game, but I want to go back to the fundamentals. They've played it out pretty well throughout. Much better than we've seen from DSG. I think they have been scaling. A lot of the concern for them when we looked at their position going into this weekend was... They're so far behind the pack, but then you look at the strength of schedule and you realize, well, they haven't played any of the teams that are like next to them in the standings. They made quick work of Mirage, really solid win here against Lit. I mean, if they're able to take down uh, their final opponents, I believe it's AOE that is their last opponent, if I remember from the schedule correctly. Yeah. Either way, it's teams that are still not locked for playoffs. Maybe we were uh, judging DSG a little too quickly, but let's see what they have for game number two as we're going to send it to a short break before we're back to see if they can make a 2-0 happen today. See you there. They said it couldn't be done. They said the world would never accept a cookie this long. Or a churro, and probably not a pretzel either. They also said under no circumstances should those really long and delicious treats be wildly affordable. To which we said, but we already made them. And they are. Introducing the incredible new footlong sidekicks. Get one at Subway today. Before this guy won this, he actually won this. And now these guys, they're trying to do the same. He's looking for the killer instinct. He's going Masu. in. He finds two. He finds three. Masu, you are utterly ridiculous. This guy is also trying to do what that guy did. And he didn't win one of those, but he did win this. Welcome to the new era. A toast to our champions. Disguise. This guy played one split of LCS and then made semis at Worlds. It's been a long journey, but I'm happy to be here now. He's always been really good, but he finally made the comeback. Oh, and he did it with this guy. This guy won Academy, and he had some dreams. I want to be like the best, best NA mid laner to go to Worlds, right? Dokla, however, very, very low, reinforced by the set ultimate, and the pop blossom is so awesome! This kid? <laughs> yeah, this kid. He actually didn't win an Academy. But a lot of people thought he was good, and boy, were they right. This guy made Worlds his very first year as a player. It took him a while to get back. He even played with this kid. But then, they did all of this together. Nobody thought they'd win LCS! Nobody thought they'd beat G2! It's time to change your mind! You know all of these names, but do you know the names of who's next? The future of the LCS starts right after the LCS. Welcome to Challenges. Get up on your feet, this is a shakedown.